Jake, what are you doing here? You're in a hotel room all by yourself. You sent your wife and kids to your family reunion because you're afraid to go. Well, you have a right to be afraid, what you did to your brother. You may think he deserved it, but you stole everything from him. Oh, sure, you gave him a little bit because he agreed to that, but you know he didn't think straight. You took advantage of him. You had leverage, and you took everything, more than you deserved. And you know he won, he's been wanting to kill you ever since. And here you are years later. You have everything. You have all kind of possessions, all kind of wealth. And you're by yourself here. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, maybe he was your father's favorite, but <laughs> dad. Dad was good. He was good to us. But you deceived him too. You lied to him, Jake. Your dad didn't do anything to you. He gave you everything you needed. And you lied to him just to get all the possessions. And you don't want to see him either. So what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? You always have a scheme. You always have a trick. You always have, you have something to get you through things. What are you going to do now? Here you are. No family. Not even any friends. You did them just like you did your family. You took advantage of them. <laughs> even your first marriage. That was just because you wanted to get in with the, the, the owner. So you married his daughter. You worked for him. And now you're stuck. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do now? <sighs> you can't blame anybody else. You don't have any excuses. I remember Dad always talking about we could trust in the Lord, that God would be faithful. My dad, he was faithful, and the Lord took care of him, but I, I didn't want to do that way. I want to do it my own way. You did it your own way, and now look where you're at. Maybe there is something that trusting in the Lord. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm always getting myself in trouble. I'm always burning bridges. I'm always stuck in the end, just with no one to even turn to. Even the best thing I did in my life, my wife now, Rachel. Oh, I love her. What I do, I send her to take care of my dirty work. I send her to try to soften everybody up for Maybe I'll show up. Oh, I'm just so tired. I'm just so tired of it all. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? Why do you keep getting yourself into this stuff? What are you going to do now? What are you going to do? Oh, Jake. this. 
That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maid servants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he'd sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone. <laughs> and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And the man said, let me go for this daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob, that sounds familiar. The promise that he'll overcome. Boy, I need that. I need to overcome myself. I need to overcome the circumstances I put myself into. Maybe dad was right. I trust in God that he would be faithful. He would watch over us. He would provide for us. Dad really believed that. He's always been fine. Lord God Almighty, my father and my grandfather believed and they had a faith in you. But I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of all the kindness and Faithfulness you've shown to my family and, and even to me. I know you've watched over me and you've spared me all. You've delivered me time and time again. I realize that. I had nothing, but now I, everything I have, I know. I know it's come from you. Lord God, I ask you to save me. Save me from those who would want to hurt me. But Lord, for, foremost, save me. Save me from my sins. Save me from myself. Save me from the sins I've sinned against you and others. Forgive me, Lord. Please, O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Bless me with your grace and your mercy. Jake. I have heard your prayers. Do not be afraid, only believe. You have struggled with others and you have struggled with me. But most of all, you have struggled within yourself. My love is for you, Jake, and I will not let you perish. Trust in me and I will give you a new life, a life that will be eternal. Go now and sin no more, for you are a whole new person. Trust in me and my peace. My joy and my strength will always be with you. I believe I can do it. I believe I can face all these circumstances and 
I believe, God, it will make a new person out of me. Well, I guess I better go start facing up to it. The life of Jacob takes place in the book of Genesis, chapters 25 through 33. I didn't try to do anything fancy here, but just to kind of give you a little bit of a quick summary of Jacob's life. You know, we talk about this being back to church Sunday. And we need to understand that Coming back to church really means nothing without two very important truths that I want to leave with you. And I think they're truths that we can, we can see in the life of Jacob. Two lessons that we can learn from Jacob. And I, I encourage you, I didn't do nearly all that took place in Jacob's life. There is a lot more to it and spend some time there in Genesis, and, and not only with Jacob, but Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob. And from there, you even have the life, life of Joseph. But you see, through generations, the faithfulness of God. We sang the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. God is a faithful God. God is always there. His promises that he'll always be there. And so I want you to know, as you are here today, whether you're a church member or not, that coming back to church or going to church, that's really not what it's about. Oh, believe me, as a pastor, I want you to come to church. I want you to come to church, that we can come together each week and we can rejoice and we can encourage each other. But I want you to understand, it's not all, it's, there's nothing magic about coming back to church. There's nothing magical about returning to church. Because the very first truth that you need to understand, that it's about returning to the Lord. It's about return, returning to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Going to church really means nothing. I mean, if, that, if that's all you do, a relationship it doesn't make. You're just going through an action. You're going through an activity. Just like going to the gym. Just like going uh, to the social club. Almost like just like going to work. But it's about coming into the house of God. It's about returning week after week to the place of God. And we can see that... Uh, as with Jacob, so it is with, with you and I. The Lord is calling us to return to him. Now, one of the events that Jacob uh, experienced when he was first on the run, when he had to leave because uh, uh, his brother uh, wanted to kill him, literally, and Jacob was at a place by himself, and he experienced a dream. He experienced a dream, and, and in, in, in the world, we, uh, you've heard the terminology, Jacob's ladder. Well, that's where, the, that's where it comes from, is the dream that Jacob had. Because he dreamed of a, a, a ladder that stretched down from heaven to earth, and, and that the, uh, the angels were ascending and descending that ladder. And see, the, we need to understand that the, the meaning of that dream, and when Jacob had the dream, uh, God gave him a promise that he would be with him. And he, even as Jacob was there on the run, God was already saying, Jacob, come back. Come back. But in that dream, God was saying that he was going to continue to work in his life. That his angels would be coming and, and going from heaven to minister to, to Jacob. And, and that dream, it's for us too. That message is for you and I. God wants to work in our lives. 
That as he's there in heaven and we're here on earth, that, uh, that he, he wants to be connected with us. And he wants, to, he wants to minister in our lives with his angels and uh, with, with his Holy Spirit. And so it's about, it, 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 it's about hearing God and returning to him. Now the interesting thing about that place where Jacob had that dream, he built an altar there kind of as a remembrance, but uh, uh, he called it Bethel. And that name means God's house. God's house. So when we talk about coming back to church or returning to church, it's about returning to God's house, to his presence, to come back to him. And see that we need to understand that was the first time that Jacob was at that place that he called Bethel. But later on, well, well, well after his reunion with his brother and, uh, and after his experience uh, uh, with God where his name, was, God even gave him a different name and called him Israel instead of Jacob. But God called Jacob to return to Bethel, to go back to that place. And again, it was uh, just symbolic to, to return, to, to be with the Lord, to be in his presence. And so I want you to understand, we, you know, we, we, we called this Sunday back to church Sunday. But it's about returning to the Lord. And the second point I want you to understand, because, hey, it's okay to return. It's okay to come back. You know, we all have family reunions, right? I mean, there's family reunions you, around the holidays, maybe. Uh, maybe they're big, maybe they're small. But we understand what it means to come back home. We understand what it means to, if you've uh, uh, been gone for some time, and to, to come back home. But see, that returning, that coming back, it too doesn't mean anything. Unless, and this is truth number two, unless there's a relationship. And in this case, it's a returning to the Lord, but going deeper and determining to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's what God's about. He's a, he's a relational God. God, God uh, he's the creator of this universe. He, uh, I mean, when, when you, you recognize even how big the world is, and the world is small compared to the universe, and, and God created this entire universe, and then there's just little old me and little old you. But see, God's plan for creation was not just to make some marvelous creation. But at the pinnacle of that creation... He created you and he created me. And he created you and me for the purpose to have a relationship with. So you go through the days of creation and the plants and the animals were all created, but they weren't created to have a relationship with God. He created man and woman. He created you and me because he wants to have a relationship with us. And that's what it's about. That's what this life is about that we live. All we can be about our careers, we can be about uh, our goals, and we can be about uh, uh, you know, uh, living this life to the fullest. But the purpose for each of our lives is for the Creator. And that he wants a relationship with us, and he wants us to return to him and to have a relationship with him. To experience him in all of his glory. His love and his promises for, for, for you and I. And so we need to understand that uh, our relationship with God it influences everything that we do. 
And it is the foundation for all of our relationships. I've often, as I've talked with individuals and uh, as they are struggling with relationships, if they're struggling with uh, marriages, if they're struggling with uh, children, siblings, uh, that often if our relationship with God is not where it should be, then our relationships with each other won't be as well. It's about returning to God and relating to him, just knowing his love and loving him back. And that's what Jacob experienced. He was on the run. He, 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 ran, from every, he ran from God, and we're told there is in, in uh, uh, that portion of Genesis 32 that God even said, you struggled with me and you struggled with others. But you've overcome. You've overcome because he came back to the Lord. And that's what God has for you and I. We can be victorious. We can overcome. We can live this life uh, with great victory. Is it going to be easy? No. That's not the promise. The promise is not that the, this life is going to be easy. The promise is that we'll overcome. We'll be victorious. That God will be with us and we'll overcome. And so I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what uh, the circumstances of you coming here. If, you, uh, uh, if you've been coming here for years or if you're here today, maybe for the first time. But I do know this, that we as human beings, we pretty much experience a lot of the same stuff. And God's promises for each and every one of us. It's not that one person is more qualified than the other. No, his promise is for each and every one of us that we will overcome. When we return to him and we have a relationship with him, we will overcome. We'll be victorious. And he'll give us new life. He gave Jacob a new name. Now, you're going to have to have a new name? No. <laughs> you don't have to change your name. But you're going to be a new person. You're going to be a new individual, a new man, a new woman. And, and, and uh, now, some of the old stuff, maybe it's going to still be there. It doesn't mean it magically disappears. You're going to have to face the same things tomorrow, the same people at work, the same uh, people in your neighborhood, the same family members. But there's a new promise. There's a new relationship you have with God and, and with Jesus Christ. And, and, and it's just a new outlook that you'll overcome. You'll be victorious. And you'll be able to face each day with the promises that God has for you. And so as you're here today, I don't know if you could relate to Jake or Jacob. I think we all can in some way. Some of us a little bit, some of us a lot. But the promise is the same for each one of us that God will be with you, God will take care of you, and that we can believe in that eternal life that is yet to come through Jesus Christ.